Bruh. I really expected to come on here and talk about a three game winning streak. <laughs> Man, the Pistons had so many chances to win this game against the undermanned Hornets team. Man, they missed an opportunity, man. All right, let's get into this game, man. So, the Pistons lose to the Charlotte Hornets tonight, 108 to 107, on a buzzer beating putback from Brenda Miller. <sighs> All right, man. Um, this this was so disappointing just because. This game was there for the Pistons to take all night long. The Pistons came ready to play this game. They went up 10 to four to start the game. Quick timeout by the Hornets. They looked locked in. And they just had opportunities to put the game away. Every time the Pistons would get about a seven or eight lead, they would just relax defensively. They would just relax. And they would allow the Hornets to get back into the game. And it became a nip tuck game the rest of the way. Um, this is what I talked about. If you guys who remember a few weeks ago, I talked about this with young teams. This is what's going to happen. You're going to have games when you win games, you're supposed to lose and you lose games. You're supposed to win. The Pistons beat the Lakers who nobody expected them to beat. And then they lose to the Hornets who I don't think many expected them to lose to. This is what young teams do. They play up and down to their competition. They don't put teams away. When they have the opportunity to do so. You know, and that's that's part of the growing pains. I've talked about it before. There's going to be some growing pains this season with this team. It's going to be exciting times, exciting games, which we had a lot of tonight. But it's going to be growing pains. You got to beat the team you're supposed to beat, man. And they didn't do that tonight. All right. So let's fast forward to the fourth quarter, right? Late in the fourth quarter. LaMelo Ball, who was shooting terribly this whole game, catches fire. And that's what happens when you let a home team hang around. Right When you don't put a team away early, regardless of what's going on the first few quarters, that fourth quarter, the crowd can get behind them and they can find a jolt of energy and they can get hot. That's just how it works. When you don't put teams away, that's what's going to happen. And that's what happened tonight. So LaMelo Ball hit back-to-back -back threes to put Charlotte up with about 30 seconds left. Jaden Ivey came and got a quick two. The Hornets, they inbound the ball. Ron Holland steals the ball and goes coast to coast for a layup. He's really impressed. We're going to get into him more later. He's really impressed me so far. Um, he's, he's fearless. And that should have been the game winner. That should have ended the game. Ensuing play, Hornets get the ball. Six seconds left. Grant Williams finds himself wide open for a three. It rattles out with about two seconds left. And all you see is Brandon Miller dart toward the rim for a put back at the buzzer. Malik Beasley was supposed to box him out. And he, it looked like he tried to, but he didn't position himself. And Miller just went right around him. That can't happen. That can't happen. You got to secure the rebound, first of all. You got to secure that rebound. You can't give them second chances. You got to secure that ball. You have to. You absolutely have to. And if you don't, you have to box out. Just the last game, I was praising the Pistons for how they were all crashing the glass. The guards included. They did not on this play. And nobody pursued the ball and nobody boxed out. That's ball game. Missed opportunity, man. Missed opportunity. So let's get to some initial thoughts. Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey both sustained injuries tonight. Jalen Duran did not return to the game, though. Jalen Duran looked like he went up for a rebound and he came down. I thought he initially came down on Tobias's foot, but he didn't. He just came down wrong. And that was kind of concerning to me. Um, because whenever you have non-contact injuries like that, it just makes me wonder what's going on. So hopefully JD is all right. Um, he didn't return to the game. Hopefully he won't be out too long. It's just these ankle injuries, man. He just cannot get away from these ankle injuries. Whenever he seems to get on a roll and catch a rhythm, he sustains an injury. It happened last season and it happened again this season. So hopefully he won't be out long and hopefully he can, you know, get healthy and get back on the court sooner than later. Because he was just starting to settle in. You know, the beginning of the season was rough for him. Right, but these last few games, he really has been locked in defensively, and tonight was no different. You know, he came out running the floor, protecting the paint. I think he had a block or two early. He was just focused on the defensive end of the floor, so it was just disappointing to see him go down. We did have guys step up in his in his absence, which we'll get to. But hopefully, JD's all right. 
Jaden Ivey also sustained an injury. He was driving to the hoop and it looked like he banged knees with Josh Green as he tried to take a charge. It looked and it looked bad at first and he didn't get up for a minute. You know, he had his leg wrapped for a minute, but thankfully he came back into the game and finished the game. I got to shout out Paul Reed, man. Paul Reed had his best game as a Piston. He really filled in admirably in that backup center spot. He came in and he did a little bit of everything. He protected the paint pretty well. Um, he got his offense going. He was getting steals on the perimeter and taking it down for a dunk. He was getting it done in the paint nice with some nice jump hooks. He played well, man. Uh, he may have earned some time. I think the Pistons need to take a hard look at their front court and see if they can find more minutes for Paul Reed. Because if he continues to play like this, you, you got you got you got to find a role for him somehow. The Pistons really should have won this game, man. The the Hornets were without their two big men, Mark Williams and Nick Richards. They were both out tonight, so there was no rim protection. And I got to give Kay some credit for that because he knew that, and he was looking for his offense early. Right, he was getting whatever he wanted in the paint. Most of not all of his shots were in the paint. Right, he had 12 first quarter points, so he was getting it done. There was even a play where he was in the paint and he had Lamelo posted up, and he had an easy corner pass for a three. I think it was Tobias that was there, but he he said no. Nah. <laughs> he kept it himself and got two more. So he was really looking for his offense tonight. It seemed like he and JD kind of figured out that pick and roll because there was no offensive fouls again for JD. He looked really good, and it looked like he and K figured that timing out. And you really see K becoming a leader, man. He's really becoming the leader of this basketball team. You can just see it with his demeanor. You can see it with how he's talking to his teammates. There was one play where Stu got caught for offensive foul, and K was on the bench. And as soon as Stu tried to start arguing, K stood up and pointed the other way, as if to say, "Stop barking at the refs. Head the other way. Don't worry about the whistle." And Stu said, "Okay, all right." So K is slowly beginning to make it clear that he is the leader of this team. I got to shout out Ron Holland too, man. Ron Holland continues to play well in limited minutes, man. He's really doing his thing. He's he's fearless, man. He continues to impress me with his ball handling. Um, I don't want to see him as a primary ball handler or anything like that, but he's showing me that he's a capable ball handler. There were a few plays tonight where it's like, oh, okay. No, okay. <laughs> he had a few of those tonight where you would, it looked like he just was going to turn the ball over, but he ended up making a play, including the last play he made where he got the steal and took it down the other end. So Ron Holland continues to impress me, man. He also knocked down some threes tonight which is very good sign for him. He'd been struggling. I think he only made one three prior to tonight all season. So it was good to see him knock down a couple. And the thing about him, his mechanics look good. Everything about his shot looks good. His balance looks good. His release looks good. So it, for me, I think it's just him getting more reps. He just got to get more reps. Once he gets the reps in and once he gets comfortable, he's going to continue to get better and better from three. And when he does, he's going to be a very, very good player, man. He's going to be a really good player for this team. Let's get to the box. Okay, so played well, like I mentioned, man. He had 20 points. 10 rebounds, 10 assists, triple-double again for a second straight game. Only player other than Grant Hill to do that in back-to-back -back games. So shout-out to him. He played really well. Only two turnovers, right? So once again, last game, I think he had 11 and 3. 11 assists and 3 turnovers, which is pretty much a 41 to assist to turnover ratio, right? And tonight he had 10 assists and 2 turnovers, which is a 5 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. So Cade is really taking care of the ball. He had one bad turnover in the fourth quarter, which was kind of a bad one. But aside from that, he really played well tonight, man. He really wanted to win this game. Um, he didn't shoot it great. He shot 9 for 23, so not great. 0 for 4 from 3. He couldn't get that, that 3 ball going. But he did everything else well. He was playing tough defense, right? He was moving his feet. Um, he was talking, communicating, things like that. So this should have been a game that the Pistons won, for sure. It's disappointing to see them lose games like this when Kate plays such a great floor game. Jaden Ivey also played well again. He had 21 points. Four rebounds, five assists, one block, and three turnovers. Eight for 16 from the field, three for five from three. So he's continuing to knock down that three ball, man. And some of the threes he's knocking down now are just from 34, 35 feet. Like, you can just see that the confidence is just continuing to build. The work that he's putting in is starting to pay off, and he's really beginning to show what he can do as a shooter. And thankfully, he didn't sustain a major injury tonight. Tobias Harris had 14 points, seven rebounds, three assists, a steal, and a block, and one turnover. 7 for 12 from the field, 0 for 3 from 3. He still could not knock down any corner threes, man. He had a couple threes there late, which really would have put the Pistons in position to win and kind of close the door. But he wasn't able to knock him down. So hopefully he can get out of this shooting slump soon, man, because we really need his scoring. You know, he, he had 14 points, which is solid, but we need about 18 to 20 from him on a nightly basis. I think that's what the expectation was for Pistons fans coming in, you know, to give us a solid 18 point tonight. He didn't play a bad game. He played a solid game. I just hope he can start knocking down that three ball, man, because that's really going to hurt us if he's not able to. Tim Hardaway Jr., man, he played well again. He had 13 points, three rebounds, three assists, only one turnover. 5 for 10 from the field, 3 for 7 from 3. He knocked down so many timely shots, man, when the Pistons really needed him. There were so many plays when the offense would just get stagnant and he'd just get a bucket. You know, he's a great safety valve for this team to have. 
Um, if he continues to shoot like this, he may need to get more shots because he's been efficient the last few games here. So shout out to him. He played well. Paul Reed, man, he played really, really well. 13 points, two rebounds, two steals, one block, turnover. Six for six from the field, man. He didn't miss a shot. Only thing he missed was a free throw at the line. But Paul Reed, man, like I said earlier, he may have earned himself some more playing time, especially if Jalen Duran's going to be out for a few games or so. But he filled in admirably, man. He played very, very well. He's very, very athletic for a big guy. Very, very athletic, man. He had a one tomahawk dunk, which was crazy. A drop-off pass from Cade, and he went up and threw it down with authority. So he, I think the Pistons need to give him another look and see if there's a way to get him some more minutes because he doesn't have to go six for six every night, but if he brings the type of effort and energy and burst that he did tonight, I think he deserves an opportunity, and I think he deserves to get more playing time for sure. Isaiah Stewart has six points, seven rebounds, six assists, one block on three for six shooting, 0 for one from three. The difference between Stu and Paul Reed is just the rugged style of play. Paul Reed is not soft at all, but Stu just plays with a certain physicality, right? That no one else on the team plays with. He establishes a tone, right? And that's what that's what he does. Paul Reed gives you more offense. He gives you more size, offense, and athleticism, right? So he gives you a lot of things that Stu doesn't give you. So I think that may be where the Pistons have to figure out how they're going to divvy those minutes up. Because I think what we saw from Paul Reed tonight, you got to give him an opportunity. So we'll see how that plays out. But all in all, man, this was a game the Pistons should have won, man. I'm so disappointed in this loss. The Pistons, I, I thought they were going to win this game. I thought they were going to win the next game against the Hawks. I thought the Pistons were going to be ending this week on a four-game winning streak. And there's no reason they should have lost this game tonight. So up next for the Pistons are the Atlanta Hawks this Friday. Um, I think the Pistons should win this game as well. Coming off a, a disappointing loss, a heartbreaking loss. I, hopefully the Pistons will come in with some anger and be able to bounce back. But what did you guys see that I missed? There was a lot in this game that we could talk about. So I know there's some things that I missed that you guys caught. So let me know down below in the comments and let's talk about it. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Breaking records, set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time, he's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. While they sleep, we work it. Close up my action. Jay, then I'll be on the way and get that for the ride. Electrifying through the air, a Detroit shot. And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him. That boy is poison. It's in the